let's um, let's go talk about a few other uh, essentials. Um, so we've talked about data sets. There's several types of data sets, simple data sets, time data sets, which we've been using, phase data sets, which hold pairs of values. These are useful for state space analysis for those for whom that's a meaningful concept, creation of phase diagrams. Um, and and this, this is really a, a nifty thing. Um, and histograms, um, uh, which record, you define bins and they record the number falling into each bin. Um, it's worth it's worth reflecting on, though, um, a point I made at the start of the day, which is that with these statistics, so statistics that we've shown associated with population are, are merely convenient. We can always write Java code to calculate those things, just loop over the population and count the number, but they're convenient for doing this. But what's more important is, is the, the conceptual foundation associated with them, which is once you have an individual representation of the population, you can record um, data on counts, however way, or averages, uh, using whatever subdivisions you wish. So you could record, you know, according to this, sub this type of, um, of categorization, that type of categorization, this combination, et cetera. And, um, and that lends itself to, um, to actually uh, some very effective calibration opportunities and parameterization because, because you're no longer a slave to the categorization built into the model right. from an aggregate level. Instead, if you have data that's broken down by five year age categories or data broken down by three year or some data that specified children, adults, and you want to be able to make use of it, you can make use of all of that because you have ways of sort of keeping track of the numbers in the model for, for each of those. Um, and similarly, you can keep track of incident um, incidence data as however, whatever time frames you're, you're seeking. This is a very powerful thing that sometimes gives you recourse to data sources for checking against your model that you wouldn't otherwise have output, have options to do. Okay. Um, Wanna, again, I want to talk about a couple other essentials. Um, one of them is the uh, the option of outputting to the console. Um, so within our models, we have this, uh, within any logic, we have this thing called the console here. And that console can be used to give uh, textual feedback about what's going on within a model. Um, and we've actually seen this call to trace LN. So this is trace followed by a new line. And you can give it a, a string set of characters in quotes, and it will output that straight to the console. You can alternatively um, use the basic Java mechanisms, system.out.println, system.error.println. This occurs in red, which is nice for highlighting it. Um, so this occurs in the console, we'll scroll by, it's readily visible, and you can cut and paste from another document. The cons is that it's limited length, it can be mixed up with, with other output, depends on your memory to copy it, and it's less structured. But it can be very useful to trace what's going on in a model for debugging purposes. Oh, this event occurred. You, you just, you have it report, okay, this event occurred. You know that that's been reached. This point has been reached. And if you're trying to debug things, it can be really useful to add some of these comments so you kind of know what's going on at the time an error occurred. But let's talk about output to a file because this will be a need that, that I think occurs to, to many people. Fortunately, it's very simple to perform in any logic. Um, it's relatively easy to import into Excel, R, and other tools, and it can be readily archived. The cons are um, you, you typically need to output to different files for different data sets, um, and uh, from a, an IT or computer science perspective, there's, a, there's an issue of uh, the fact that it's, it's not normalized. So, so scenario-wide information either needs to be repeated on each row or in a separate header for the file. Um, so like metadata about what model version this was run with. You either have to put it in a separate header, which is also printed at the beginning of the file, or you have to repeat it in each row. Um, so there's basically, to output a uh, data set to a file requires two steps. First is you have to specify how to find the necessary external Java code, and then you have to define the code. Um, now, I would, I would love to go through these steps with you, but I, I really want um, to um, get to another issue before we break to lunch. And so I'm going to just um, uh, point these out 
up to you, and you can experiment with it, and I'd be glad to answer questions. So um, the first step of this process is doing what's called an import of the necessary Java libraries. And this is the first time we've seen this. So if you if you go click on main, you'll find there's an advanced tab, and there's something called import section. Okay, and what that's talking about is um, is uh, what Java libraries are used, need to be used, need to be made available mm -hmm. um, for for reference. And in this case, we're making use of what's called the Java I/O libraries. Those come with Java, and they specify a bunch of really useful functionality for working with, among other things, files, but not just files. And so you have to go there and you have to put this in your import section. And basically, what that's saying is make any class or interface, any any sort of um, public information that's declared within this Java I.O. library, make it available for your model, for, for, for in name, okay, um, within the main class. So it can refer to names there. And then you can, you, you typically will place this in in main and the so-called destroy code for main, okay. Um, uh, no, I know that sounds somewhat evocative, but um, it's basically the code that runs when main when the main class is finished doing its job, the model's being closed, this code will run. And this code is, is uh, this location is great for putting things to dump things to databases or that um, dump things to files. So you typically put this code right there within main, the on destroy event. Persons too have on destroy events, which you might use to sometimes record information. But this is the code to do it. Um, and uh, I, I'm just going to provide a high-level explanation of what's going on here. Um, at the, I'd like to draw your attention to this first. We'll talk about the higher-level structure in just a minute. To the, the top, the top section here. So what happens is we create what's called a file output stream, which depends on. It says basically, hey, go open a connection to this certain file called filename.tab. This is a tab delineated file of the sort that is used by R, Excel, I think SPSS, SAS, have imports for this, etc. Um, and, and basically this, this creates a way to, to send things to the file. Um, it's a stream associated. We actually get what's called a print stream associated with this, which is a, a way of um, sort of printing to it. And then all we do is we print we print out a rendering of our data set as a string. It's a bunch of characters. Okay? So all the data in that data set is kind of dumped as, a, as string data, as character data, to this file, to this print string. Okay? Um, and uh, you, you need to substitute here the name of the data set you want to output. So if, if it's infectious DS, you put that there. If it's um, uh, count poverty DS yes, put that there. Okay. Um, so that's the um, uh, the basic uh, mechanism there and it will close itself after it finishes. Probably better than once it closed there. But um, but this code can sometimes go wrong. Um, for example that file might not be you might not be able to write to it. Or maybe it's something which um, has an illegal character in it so it can't actually it's not just that it's 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 uh, you can't you don't have permissions. It's just it, it can't create a file name yet. Um, or maybe your disk is having errors. Something bad could happen. And then there's what's called uh, an exception block, which if a bad thing happens, it reports to you. It could not write to the file. Okay. Um, probably should provide a little bit more information there. Um, but I tried to keep it short um, so it would fit in this um, uh, fit in this uh, slide. Um, so uh, you could you could do this here if, if you want to output to different different data sets you could put this into a, a method and then call this method passing it references to different data sets. Um, I'll see if I can provide an example that shows this used for different data sets. But wrapping this up as a function or method, um, uh, having a uh, sort of the data set name pass the data the reference the data set passed in and the file name passed in would be a very, uh, very nice way to do it. So this is a bit of code that dumps a data set to a file. Okay? And again, I'll 
try to provide an example for that. Yeah. So why does Zoologic not have some built-in method for It's a good question. Um, when I first started doing this, it didn't. Um, it's possible it's been rolled out since then. Um, and uh, you're, you're absolutely right that it's a common need. Um, uh, here's a text file, an Excel file thing, and it's possible that those have subsumed it. Um, I'm going to ask one of the TAs, um, uh, uh, because Yuan is, is uh, preparing her lecture, probably. Um, I won't ask her, but uh, maybe Chen Wei Chong uh, or Dylan. Um, maybe maybe you could check out this Excel file and text file. Uh, maybe they basically provide all the the mechanism for doing it. Let's let's just check this out um, here, and um, and see. I'm just going to drag this up here. Let's let's. You you can. Um, this was originally. Uh, gated so that you could only do it with certain versions of any logic, um, but I haven't checked for 6.8.1. Earlier than that, I think it involved uh, requiring a professional version. I see. So basically what you can do is you could specify the file, but it, what's less clear is sort of uh, can you, outdate, um, can you uh, uh, output to it uh, very easily. So we'll, we'll get someone to check that out. Maybe there's an even simpler way now, but uh, right, you know, for, for what we've done, this is actually in one of the example models, or maybe several of them. I think it may be in, in the, um, the one that's uh, HBase model is very down, that we'll find it. Um, but I'll, I'll look in any case, and you can see how it's done. But yes, it would be nicer if there were better way. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like you can just put that file there and then you file dot Okay, so, so that would simplify some of this code. Basically, it would make it a single line right here, probably. It would probably it would basically eliminate this stuff and, and make it a single line. OK. Um, and it can print to an Excel file using that, or to a, because there's an Excel file and a text file one. Yeah. OK, thanks, Dylan. That's, uh, that's great. So we'll, we'll update that accordingly. Um, so any question about that, about files, file output? What I'd really like to know, Dylan, is do different data sets have to go to different files? Or could you? Because right now, what this does is it dumps one data set to one file, and then for another data set, it would have to go to a different file. Um, it looks like you can just call that file anywhere and write it anywhere. So okay. You can probably have multiple files for different data sets. Yeah. Okay, so so we'll check th check that out more. But this is your recourse. This is, is something you could definitely do. Okay. Um, okay. Um, let's talk about export to databases. Our group has used this tremendously. Um, UN is is particularly um, uh, the uh, the master and expert of this. Uh, my student Amy Gao, who you'll probably be hearing later this week on our ESRD model. Um, she was scheduled to go yesterday, but we deferred it because of the need for, for extra time. Um, uh, she, um, she's also made central use of databases, both for analysis and for recording basic data. So she does a lot of queries against the database to, to extract data for analysis. Um, and a lot of stuff actually in the database rather than doing calculations in, within any logic itself. Um, it's extremely flexible. You could save away tons of data. Um, you know, I've had students, uh, other students, save away gigabytes worth of data from different runs, and it's extremely flexible. You can go back and retrospect on it, summarize all runs, which are with this model version or later, which were within these parameter settings, et cetera. Um, and it's very easy to clean things up. It doesn't litter your disk or files. Um, it can be readily used from, um, from tools such as uh, R or SPSS or SAS. Um, the cons are, at least uh, until this version, and I, I've got to check with this version, it required more programming and you need to set up the database. With, with previous versions, um, to use the database uh, interfaces, you needed to have the professional version. It looks to me like um, with this version you can actually, uh, aha, see, there you go. 
it's, it's gated. This uh, element is available only in the professional version. So having queries and so on. Um, you can have define a database, but you, you can't um, do inserts into it, updates on it. Now, the good news is it's really, really easy to do it without those things. Um, and UN um, uh, could, could speak uh, with authority about um, many of the details. But what do you have to do to output your databases? Well, first of all, you have to have a database set up, and that's a one-time sort of thing. And then you have to add a reference to the requisite data li uh, database libraries. So if you're using MySQL, you have to add a reference to MySQL libraries. If you're using Microsoft Access to the MySQL Access libraries, if you're using um, MS SQL Server to, to those, DB2, et cetera. And then each time during simulation, you need to open a database connection um, and, and uh, insert any sort of metadata that you want. And then periodically during simulation, insert the values into the database. Or at the end of model execution, just dump a lot of data from data sets. Um, and there's a wide variety of databases we've used with this, um, and they include MySQL, MS SQL Server, H2. Um, I, think, I think also another student used uh, MS Access. Um, and uh, generally speaking, there's, you have a lot of choices of, of databases <coughs> in which to store it. Um, you, you have to provide a reference to the necessary code to connect to that database. Um, and this is a, a jar file. And where that's present, where that's recorded is um, in, if you go to the model as a whole, there's a tab called dependencies. And you notice it says jar files and class files. A jar file is a Java archive file. It's an archive of code. Um, and uh, basically, you have to provide a link to it so that you can, it knows how to work with that database. Um, sort of provides it the information needed to connect to that database. And then um, uh, you, you can call to add data to the database, et cetera. So UN has some very little, little bits of code. Here basically you can call execute query with an SQL query. You can call execute update to update information that's already been stored. You can insert data into the database. And really you don't have to, this code is just boilerplate. You just reuse it um, for different, different situations. Um, and she can talk more about that. Yeah. So with the university, like, you can't write the database, you can't compute one. I think. So. Uh, you were saying you're um, okay. So um, with the with the university license. So, so really, the question is, what does any logic provide built-in support for? Okay. Um, you can you can use database as much as you want with this version. The question is, how much support does any logic provide for that? Okay, yeah, I mean, you can you can go to town with this um, with this version and, and have tremendous use of databases very centrally if you're willing to kind of use a little bit of code. And I mean, it's it's really like one page worth of code um, to to do it, one or two pages worth of code that you just call and you just reuse that code for every project you create. You just reuse the code and you just call off to it and it just writes to the database. Um, and, and there's no extra work really required on a, a per case basis um, beyond setting up the database. Um, but any logic provides much nicer functionality yet um, for the professional version where you can graphically define queries f to hit the database and, and uh, it, it basically provides a graphical support for working with databases. That's probably the best way to put it. Um, personally, I'm not sure how much that, that buys you, but it makes it a little bit less, um, uh, let, let's put it this way. For someone who's totally new to it, 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 it eases that, that learning curve. But what you still need to learn is SQL to, to hit in the database. So how many people here have heard of SQL? So um, SQL is a structured query language, um, and it's a s it's a standard with dialects um, that's supported by uh, relational database systems uh, worldwide. And for decades now, it's been a um, the sort of most common language used for interfacing with databases. Um, it supports multiple tables and inserting data on tables, updating it, querying data from the tables. It's a very flexible language. Um, compared to learning Java, it's a lot easier than learning Java. Learning 
Java is, is uh, I, I don't want to overstate that its complexity. It, it's actually uh, doable if you're willing to study it. And there's some good folks out there I'll be referring you to in the final day of the class um, that, that will ease that process. But SQL is something that's widely used by people with little or no computer, computer uh, background, no training courses in programming. And it's a very flexible language. Um, it does require some um, some learning to to kind of know the the full complement of things you want to know to uh, to extract data from these databases. But quite a few people in here have obviously used it. Those who haven't, um, it's it's quite doable. And um, there's quite a lot of people from the health sciences that go on to become very good at, at SQL. It's an extremely practical skill to have. It's an extremely practical skill to be able to store data. And, S and relational databases and access with SQL. As far as I'm concerned, that's the big barrier to using databases in any logic is you, 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 you want to be able to learn SQL enough to get you by. And if you're willing to spend a few days studying SQL, I can tell you, you will probably get good enough for your needs. Okay? It's just not that complicated a language. Um, you need to learn about drawings, you need to learn about select statements, and insert statements, and, and it's really not that bad. Um, and once you've done that, you're off to the races. You plug in UN's database uh, class, and um, and you can do issue SQL statements and get back data from the database, and, and you're in, in good shape. Okay? Um, and it's SQL is your friend, too. Whether you, you want to accept him as a friend is it's to be determined. Um, okay. Um, so, any questions further about that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. There. There are. Some, <laughs> there are some. Um, uh, so, what we have found is that um, the professional version different. So Jeff could comment on this with, <laughs> with greater <laughs> specificity probably than I, than I can. We found the professional version has good support for um, things that you can do in the university version with a little bit more tweaking. But it's not that bad typically. But I'll mention a couple areas, OK? Um, area one is, data, is, sorry, uh, is databases. Area two is debugging. So I'm going to show you how you can do debugging in any logic from an external debugger, called the, which is in a package called Eclipse, which is a, a, a very popular software development package. And you can do basically the debugging you can do in the AnyLogic debugger, but the AnyLogic debugger you can do all within this framework. Okay. Now that being said, there's actually a researcher version of AnyLogic that, um, that uh, does support the debugger. Okay, um, it's just a little bit more expensive than the university version. Um, maybe I shouldn't say a little. It's like maybe four times as expensive or something, uh, which is <laughs> a fair bit um, for for us on a limited budget. Uh, uh, I will I will say this. Um, um, let me let me pause the recording here for a second. <laughs> um, <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> 